And now it's time for Puddle Lane and meet the monster who loses his beard. Auntie Flo. Where? I can't see her. That's because she's not there. But I made you look, didn't I? <laughs> you shouldn't say things that aren't true. I know that, Mr. Hooter, but this isn't like telling fibs. This is just a game. It's called Made You Look. Oh, hello, magician. <laughs> made you look again. You didn't make <laughs> me look. You might be able to fool Snodgrass. But you can't fool me. Perhaps not. But I should think he could. Who? Ork. You caught me out. Yes, made you look, didn't I? <laughs> look. Two red ears. Ah, you can't catch me out as easily as that. <laughs> We're not fooling Toby. There really are two red ears. It's the Gruffle. He's right behind you. Look! I won't look. You can't make a fool of me. But he really is there. Oh, very good, Snodgrass. You look so scared I could almost believe the Gruffle is there. <laughs> but he is! Didn't you hear him roar? That was Snodgrass. Very clever of him, too. He managed to roar without moving his... mouth. Run, everybody! <laughs> you look very scared. Oh, magician, Auntie Flo, the Gruffle's here. He's climbing into the garden. The other said I saw his ears and I thought it was all part of the game. But there he was, and he roared and looked ever so fierce. Just a I, minute. I did... Calm down, Toby. There's no need to be scared. Where exactly did you say the Gruffle is? Over there in my garden. Good. We'll take this coal across to him. <laughs> what for? Well, for him to eat, of course. I thought everybody knew that the Gruffle eats coal. Well, I often leave some in the garden for him. I expect that's why he comes here. I wish he wouldn't. I'm scared of him. Me too. He's such a bad-tempered monster. Oh, yes, but you know, sometimes I feel quite sorry for him. Yes, yeah, so do I. I don't think he can really help being bad-tempered. It's just the way Gruffles are. But he frightens people. Well, yes, he does, but he often comes off worse, do you know. I can remember when he tried to take some fish away from the cats that live in our garden. <laughs> Is that the story we began last time? Hmm. Tim and Tessa had just learned how to fish. That's right. Well, on the way home, they met the Gruffle. <gasps> what happened? Well, let's go across to the bird bath, shall we? Yes. Coming, Mr. Hooter? No, I think I'll stay here. I've had too much excitement for one day. Yeah. What's the matter, Toby? Don't you want to look into the bird bath? Oh, yes, but I'm, I'm looking out for the gruffle. I hope he doesn't come over here. Oh, don't worry about him, Toby. He won't harm you. Oh. Pegs and Tim and Tessa all went fishing in the stream. They caught three fish. Tessa and Tim ate a little fish each and then Pegs decided that it was time to go home. She picked up the third fish and took it home for supper. They just got to the lake when there was a loud roar and they saw a large red monster. It was the Gruffle. Give me that fish, roared the Gruffle. I'm hungry. Tim and Tessa were very frightened, but Pegs wasn't frightened. She put down the fish. This is our supper, not yours, she said. The monster was furious. He roared again. Fire and smoke shot out of his mouth. But at that moment, 
The wind blew the monster's beard sideways. The beard caught a light. It was all on fire. The monster leapt into the lake and put his beard under the water. Quick, cried Pegs. She picked up the fish and the three cats ran back to their home in the hole under the steps. They had just finished supper when they heard someone snuffling outside. They looked out of the hole. The gruffle was in the garden, getting dry by a fire. He looked very miserable. Look, said Tessa, he's lost his beard. It was burnt off. Serve him right, said Tim. He shouldn't blow fire at cats. He'll know better another time. <laughs>